But is there anything you'd, you'd want to say to them? Um, I mean, it depends. Sometimes I'd want to say I love you. Sometimes I'd want to say fuck you. Sometimes I'd want to say, like, look at me, I'm broken. Sometimes I'd want to say, look at me, I'm strong. You know? It depends, like, what mood I'm in. Yeah. Cool. Shall I start? My grandfather always said of me, she was born in a hurricane, and a hurricane is how she lives her life. born in Wellington, New Zealand, during a hurricane. My dad was a Catholic priest, and when he found out my mum was pregnant, he left the church to marry her. I was born to a rebel moon in a hurricane, little boy. I started learning violin and piano at the age of three. I was performing since I was about five. I used to do pretty unusual performances. I was busking as a child when I was about 12, my family relocated to England so that I could study at a prestigious music school there. I went to the Pesau School, which is one of the top music schools in the country. And I guess I've always felt the weight of this responsibility on my shoulders and the fact that I didn't ultimately pursue a classical education. My music is quite heavily classically influenced. That's because classical music is just such an intrinsic part of me. I didn't listen to anything but classical music until I was around 17. In particular, the composers I loved were Brahms, Tchaikovsky, Prokofiev, Sibelius. When I was about 16 or 17, I discovered bands like Linkin Park and Evanescence and <laughs> they were the first bands that I listened to and I was like actually this speaks to me this is showing me a world that I never knew was there before. I started to delve deeper into the world of rock and metal. My first gig was In Flames and Sepultura. My greatest love is Nine Inch Nails. They've been the sole greatest influence on, on my music. Hannah certainly influenced me a lot with uh synth sounds and industrial sort of sounds, Nine Inch Nails, that sort of stuff, which I didn't mind before, but I'd never had a proper listen to, you know, you're stuck in a car with someone for three hours going up to a gig, and it's nothing but trend. I play many of their albums constantly. In the past few years, I've also become pretty obsessed with Lana Del Rey, although she's worlds away from Trent Reznor. Stylistically, she really speaks to me, and I think that's what great art does, it doesn't it's genreless. You screwed up and brilliant, look like a million dollar man. So why is my heart broke? Although I would say my great love is rock music, that's more of a conscious choice to be putting it into my own music. I've always felt different from other people had quite a sheltered and pressured upbringing. We didn't have TV, I didn't really have a lot of access to popular culture. And so I was always different from my classmates. I was always practicing every day. That only got worse when we moved to England. It was a complete culture shock. Not only did I not have anything in common with people, I feel like my feeling of isolation only increased throughout my teenage years until I reached the end of my teens and I realised that I had no friends and I connected with no one. But then I had a breakdown at about 17. I quit school, I moved to Germany. I didn't play much music at all until I was about 19. I think this is a large part of why I was quite a vulnerable person in relationships. I met my first boyfriend when I was 19. I was, I guess, in quite a vulnerable place. I was very innocent. I'd never had any boyfriends before. And 
he was a heroin addict. Um, it was a very abusive relationship. It never really touched reality. We wrote a lot of songs together, but within 10 months it had completely imploded and it devastated me, the whole thing, for several years. And this guy's been someone that I've worked through in a lot of my songwriting. We did a lot of music together and I guess like the thing I can take from that relationship is he got me thinking like a songwriter and he encouraged me to go and express myself even though I had no singing voice, literally had no voice as of yet, but he just, he got me out there and he got me doing it and he got me breaking those fair boundaries. So he's blue skies, cold comfort, and even Wednesday's child, going back to it, that's that's all inspired by him. So it's, um, it's good to get something out of that in terms of inspiration because it was a very painful situation. Turning pain into power. My expressions of pain have always come through rage. I think that rage can very quickly change itself into an expression of strength. When you look at people, of course, you pain. If you're someone like me, you automatically think of preparing your revenge and I think a lot of a lot of the strong lyrics in my earlier albums have emerged through that thought process every heart every heart is guaranteed so cold comfort came out of this relationship where I was writing with the guy and Coming out of a really dark place, I made a lot of bad decisions. Dating for me was pretty much a financial transaction. I didn't want to be there, I didn't want to be alive, and the only thing I could really do was write. And, you know, one foot in front of the other, I wrote my way through that time, and, you know, life imitates art. I started writing about being strong, and. After a while, I guess I felt strong. You know, I got out of this and the songs continued to flow, but they just got angry. And I got a band together and just started performing. But I was still just writing for myself. My favourite lyric from Cold Comfort is from Back Again. And it says, just gotta suck up all the rivers I've cried. And it pretty much encapsulates the whole album for me. Just this feeling of pain's gonna happen, you have to deal with it in the right way, and the right way is everything's gonna make you stronger. So, by the time I progressed from cold comfort to fishing with dynamite, I had built myself, in my own head at least, into this really hard character who didn't care about other people, who was very cavalier with relationships, who really could take or leave love. So the whole album started off like that, it was very cocky, and of course, every time I get cocky, <laughs> the universe finds a way to bring me back to ground level. So this guy came into my life and I was just completely under his spell. It was it was such a strong emotion. So all my songs became about that. He was out of bounds and so this whole fantasy element of the relationship never really subsided. It was never gonna end well. I knew from the beginning that it was something that, you know, was slipping like sand through my fingers. One of the main subjects that generate a really strong emotional response in the listener is love and within that unrequited love is probably the most powerful. I think the song that most accurately describes the whole experience is Vanitas from Waiting to Burn. Just this idea of trying to paint a picture as the, the thing that you're looking at is fading before your eyes. And I'm waiting, waiting, waiting to burn. 
so waiting to burn this was a milestone of how my writing changed for the first time Jim and I although he had been in the band since the last two albums this was the first time he and I started writing together and it was a really cool relationship I don't enjoy writing music I'm just gonna put that out there I don't I like to write the instrumental side of things. I'm not so good with words, whereas... I'm into words. Music for me is a blank canvas on which to put words. And Jim is my perfect writing partner. I think we both listen to music in the same way. As a guitarist, he's very good at coming up with the kind of riffs that inspire me. Quite often we'll both sit down in a room and maybe I'll just have my headphones on and I'll start writing music on my laptop whilst Hannah's with a pen and paper sat on the other side of the room. And we might not talk for a couple of hours, but then we'll just compare notes and see what we've got. And quite often, surprisingly, the lyrics match the song I've got in terms of theme and sort of atmospheric vibe of the song. That's how we write. We'd go around the hairs and get the bears in and, and just jam stuff out or he'd come to me with, with tracks he had written that I would then put melodies and lyrics on top of. I would say for me, being in the world has been a pretty lonely experience. My other band, Bird Eats Baby, is a very different vibe. They're very inclusive, have a great fan network. The band is very much a group mentality, whereas I've always been a lone wolf. This has changed in recent years as I've been working with Jim. I went out with a friend of mine for a birthday. When we got to the nightclub, there was a lady playing violin. It was very good, but I'm a shy guy, so I uh, didn't approach her and I was too afraid. But a friend of mine did, and he ended up being a drummer. And I just basically said to him in no uncertain terms, if she ever needs a guitarist, let me know. And lo and behold, a week after that, I ended up being guitarist for the band, and the rest is history. We started working together about seven years ago. I was quite surprised when I first met Hannah to find that she's actually a much shyer person off stage than her persona lets on on stage because it's very confident, it's very in your face aggressive. But yeah, she seems a thoughtful person. We had many chats about music theory as our friendship developed and yeah, now I like to think we're friends beyond the band and just into our own personal lives. And for the first time I've had a long-term partner. It's made the world a little less lonely for me creatively. When I take in the air, you surface again. So I am always speaking to one particular person in my songs, and that's always the person that I'm writing about. In my song, If You Just, from Wednesday's Child, there are two lines that really drive that home. And the first one is, Each person I reach just through seeking a fit. And the second line is, when I talk in my head, it's you I address. And I think this is an accurate illustration of how I feel about people when they really get under my skin and how I deal with that through songwriting. Can we chart your progress as a person directly through your music? I'd like to think so. I, I look back on Cold Comfort now and I really see my growth as a person and a songwriter. And yet I wouldn't change a thing about that album. I think it really accurately sums up what I was going through at that point in my life. To me that's what being an artist means, it's a documentation of your experiences and, and that expression and I, and I think that that needs to be done as you're going through it at the time and that's what makes it powerful. When I was writing these songs, I went over and over in my head thinking if this person could hear it, what would they think? And it's funny, I think songwriting is a really cathartic thing. When I finally get it out of my system in these boxes of words, it becomes very clear that the people I thought I was singing to are just an illusion in my head and actually I'm singing to myself to heal myself in some way. I guess I don't imagine them seeing me now. These people aren't that important, you know, it's, it's, it's the weight that I've given to them in my head that's important, you know. When I really think about it, I'm, I'm talking to the void because that's what they are to me. There's a snake in the grass and an elephant in the
I really feel like Hannah Piranha is my true identity and from the moment that I was able to express myself under that name I feel like I was able to break through the cage and really bear my soul and, and show myself in my real form to the world. I've been practicing new instruments recently at the moment in particular the piano oh, what a thrill. Fascinations every new instrument inspires a new way of looking at music and writing songs and I would say the piano is a very big influence for our next album it's going to be full of big melodies and a real cinematic soundscape yeah, going forward in terms of our sound and how we want to be as musicians, I think we're keeping the core fundamentals of the classic Hannah Piranha sound the same, but we're trying to hone, refine and just distill something slightly different, a bit more us into the music. Quite a lot of that's been a bit of a step away from the violin, I'd say, recently, and a bit more into sort of electronic influences. I think that... Being in a stable place really allows me to process some of the trauma that I went through in my younger years and so the output is just as dark, it's really quite retrospective at the moment. I think Hannah's got more confident in recent years, certainly in herself and what she does. Like her violin, she's always been incredibly confident I felt, but I think she believes in her lyrics more and she feels more comfortable and confident in writing exactly what she means. Yeah, other than that, there's not much to improve really. She was always the uh, finished product. It's funny because I do feel like I've grown in vulnerability, whereas at the start it was all about anger and revenge and strength. Most recently, and actually the songs we're currently writing, it's, it's going back to the very roots of really being able to admit that you're hurt and you're weak. And I think that's where real strength lies. The kind of hurt that tries to I wrote a book last year, which was an entirely new experience for me. It was a, an extension of my harp album, Wednesday's Child. I'm always trying to learn new instruments, trying to learn new skills, trying to expand my horizon, and the more I learn, the more exciting the world becomes for me. It's a, it's a big place and there's a lot to learn, and I feel like this is a real growth from, from when I started out with the band, from when I didn't care if I was dead or alive and yeah I feel like the world's a lot more of a hopeful place for me now and more of an exciting place most of the time. I would say throughout all of the experiences I've had, I've intrinsically not changed as a person. And I think that's the real power of art. You can catalyze things and instead of absorbing them, they move through you and out in your songs. And as a result, I feel like I'm the same person that I've always been. And that person is Hannah Piranha. I had a dream I was flying